Hi friends, this week I'm going to teach you how to navigate being petty. <laughs> really, I'm going to tell you situations when you need to be understanding versus when you need to match someone's energy and give them what they're giving you because sometimes that's warranted. And I'm going to be hitting on friendships and relationships. All of this applies to everything. Anytime someone is like seeming like they're playing with you, this is how to navigate it. But the whole thing with being petty and navigating this situation of when to be understanding versus match to energy, you have to be certain and you have to be strategic before you start pulling some petty little games because you could look crazy and we don't want to do that. We want to be crazy and nobody know. <laughs> and one of the biggest things you guys ask me about is people not putting effort back into you and kind of when to leave. And the first thing I want to say is a lot of you are hurting your own feelings. I used to be one of these people where I would just hurt my own feelings because I expected too much from someone who couldn't give it to me. And this comes from unrealistic expectations of the person you are dealing with. So step one with all this is assess this person and their life fully. How likely is it that this person that you want to either be friends with or date, how likely is it for them to be as close or involved in your life as you want them? Like you got to check their life. You got to assess their goals. Like what are their goals? What are they working toward? What are they working on? Where is a lot of their energy and time being spent? You also have to look at their lifestyle. Is it inconvenient to see you? <laughs> is it inconvenient to hang out with you and make time for you? You got to set the expectations for real. Also look at the people they already have in their life. Do they already have a ton of friends? Do they already have a ton of potential little people they might be playing with? Do they have like a bunch of people in their business side? Like how many people are actually in this person's life? Because that's going to help you get a realistic idea of do you even have a place in their life? Yeah, you might like them. They might like you. But how realistic is it that you could be incorporated? The other thing to look at is all the different things that they're juggling. How much responsibility do they have? Do they have free time? Do they have space? We already talked about that in their life. But like some people have kids. That's a full-time job and a half just to have a child. Okay? So look at all the things that they're juggling. Like I said, with everything they're working on, all the people already in their life. And look at what they're trying to balance and how much they already have to take into consideration. This will give you a base level expectation of how much energy and effort they have to lend to you to take you into consideration because if someone is like me if you try to come at me thinking you're going to come at me like a normal person i'm gonna hurt your feelings by accident like you're gonna hurt your own feelings really because i'm someone who's extremely busy and if you think i have the extra bandwidth to give to someone and put all this effort and energy into you if you go at me with the expectation of like i'm gonna be prioritized and leo's gonna love me and i'm gonna be the closest person like friend wise or relationship wise to him that's an unrealistic expectation and you're gonna get your feelings hurt because that's not accurate i'm not someone with all of this extra energy to be lent out so that's where you get to decide is this person someone you actually want to try and get this friendship or partnership from so the biggest thing with this is cater your expectations to the person you're interested in, friend or partner. You got to look at them specifically. Every single relationship you have with every different person is completely different. You can't expect one way to work for everybody. If one way worked over here, it ain't going to work over here. Like all your expectations, that's why I'm saying assess the person and them specifically and their life and all the distractions they already have and all the things they're already doing. You got to take inventory of every single person each time you meet them because it's always going to be different. And you need that base level understanding of them to be able to navigate a relationship or friendship with them. And I agree with the whole if they wanted to, they would thing. But a lot of people are not going to tell you to your face. My job comes before you. Everything I'm working on comes before you. I'm going to prioritize that. So. That will make you question yourself and why you're not good enough and like, oh, they just don't like me enough. Sometimes that's not really the case. It is the case. It, honestly, it kind of is the case. Like that is the truth. If they wanted to, they would. But to protect yourself from getting hurt so much, you got to get a realistic view on this person. Because sometimes people are just extremely busy and it's not an excuse and it's not that they don't like you enough. They're just really, really busy and things will slip their mind because I'm in a position right now where I'm not able to be as present as I want to be with my friends and other people that I want in my life. I'm not able to balance everything I'm currently balancing and also do that. 
it would require me sacrificing something that I'm working on or something that I'm doing with my career to make more time for this. That's where I'm saying some people just aren't going to tell you straight up, look, I value you. I want you in my life, but I'm only willing to exert like this much and put this much of my life into you because it's going to take away from everything else that I'm working on big picture. But it doesn't mean that I'm not capable of caring about someone. But there is going to have to be a boundary around how much I can. Like if you expect me to love you and make you feel cared about and prioritized and thought of like a man with a nine to five, baby, it ain't going to happen. <laughs> I need you to cater to me a little bit. I'm busy. <laughs> and that's something I wanted to bring up because if they wanted to, they would it is true. But like, oh, it just is difficult. It's real difficult. So... The next thing I want to talk about is assuming that someone is being petty or playing a game. Because like I said, some people are actually just busy. Hi. And when people assume that I'm playing a game or being petty or not responding on purpose or like not going to certain plans on purpose to seem unavailable, when you retaliate because you think I'm being petty, you look like the asshole and I'm put off by you now. So you got to watch your assumption and realistically look at what's happening. Is this person actually being petty or are they actually just busy? Because the way you feel about that is going to be completely separate. It's going to be completely different. You're not going to be as upset and hurt and like triggered by it. You're not going to be as emotionally charged when you aren't assuming they're being petty. So that's why I'm saying you got to get an inventory of this person first so you can kind of analyze, are you being petty? Or are you being busy? And you also can't assume someone isn't interested. Like I said, your level of communication you're used to with certain people in your life will be different with every other person. So if you're used to a partner who's up your ass texting you 24 seven, that's your way of kind of like getting reassurance and feeling cared about and getting the validation that the person likes you. You meet someone like me, I'm not gonna be texting you all day every day. I'll text you here and there, but the time I spend with you is where I'm gonna make you feel the most cared about more than anyone. It's not gonna be in the little texts and the little bullshit. So you gotta watch that assumption too. What are they doing that's making you assume they aren't into you, okay? Because some people are like hypersensitive and hyper aware of like potential hints of like, oh, I'm not into you. So you kind of hurt your own feelings. You're like, ah, oh, they're just, they're not into me. So you're gonna like walk away. When the person might actually really like you, then there's other people, and you don't ever want to be this one. The bitch that can't take a hint. Ah! Sometimes you just got to take the hint that somebody just not into you. <laughs> I think I should do a full podcast episode of signs they're not into you. <laughs> That's going to hurt some feelings, though. But I really, really, really wanted to hit on do not automatically assume people are being petty with you or playing a game. Now, if someone is intentionally ignoring you, that's a different story. That, like I just talked about in my last episode, I'm blocking you immediately because this guy didn't respond to my DM. Two days later, he's posted on his story, still hasn't opened my message. I blocked him. Like if someone is not responding to you, but they're doing other things on their phone, that's intentionally ignoring you. But also you have to read the specific people because if you start fucking with an influencer, I might not be responding to my texts, but I'm posting on social media. That's my job. So I'm not on social media messaging people and fiddling my diddle and doing all this shit. I'm posting to get off of social media. Like that's the big component of assess who you're dealing with because for normal people to be posting on social media and not respond to your text, that's intentionally ignoring you. For me to not respond to your text and then be posting on social media, that's different. I'm not checking anything on my phone. That's work. So that's why I'm saying you might be hurting your feelings by not getting an accurate read. So now comes the next step. Once you've kind of assessed the person that you either want to be friends with or date and you understand this is what the interaction and the communication and this relationship or friendship will look like, then you get to decide. Do you want to put up with it? Is that okay? Are you willing to take the time to learn this person and learn this new way of having a relationship and being okay with it? Or is that not going to be enough for you? Like, that's totally fine. You're allowed to say, I need more attention and time and thought and consideration than you are willing to give. That is totally okay. That is a mature fucking thing to say. And if you feel like someone is too busy 
for the amount of attention you need or would like in a relationship, that's a need you have. That's valid. You're allowed to stand on it. But do not try and change this person. You can communicate it. This is what I would want. Are you able to do it? And if they say, this is how my life is, like this is the amount of energy I have to lend to you. If that's not enough, do not try and change them. Do not sit there and try and make yourself become okay with it just because you like this person. You're gonna hurt your own feelings. You're gonna have needs that are unmet. You're gonna feel neglected and it's gonna do nothing but cause chaos. And if someone is extremely busy and you are a source of chaos, they will cut you off. So my biggest thing is decide. After you get the understanding of who you're dealing with, is this something you actually want to pursue? Is this something you would be okay with? Or is it not? And if it is not, you need to let it go. You need to walk away, move forward, move on, go to the next one. Because do not try and change people. Trust and believe. Don't. <laughs> and I personally deal with this all the time. Like this is something I know how to navigate. That's why I'm making this episode because it's very prevalent in my life right now. I just moved to LA. And there's a lot of influencers I would love to be friends with and I want to be like closer with. Like I would love to have them in my day to day. But if you objectively, logically look at these people plus me, we are both so slammed and our schedules are so chaotic and our lives are so centered around us and what we're doing. You kind of have to be selfish with what we're doing. So if you get two people with crazy hectic schedules, is it realistic to try and be best friends day to day or even date? Is that logical? Is it realistic? Let's get objective for a second. It's not about who likes who more and if you love them enough, you would. Is it even realistic to hope for that? Not really. And that's why I haven't pursued a lot of friendships that I want to pursue. Like there's so many influencers that I am friends with and we're like, cool, we see each other here and there. I would love to see them more, but it's not realistic. It's not gonna work. And that gets you into a situation when you find someone that's as busy as you and you decide, okay, I'm ready to lend extra energy into it. And you wanna foster this relationship and make it grow. This is where you hurt your own feelings. Because if I'm over here putting all of my spare effort and energy into this person, I'm trying to hang out, I'm trying to make plans, trying to do all this shit, and they're constantly saying no, they're not able to, they're busy, they're not texting me as much as I'm texting them. Like if I'm the one putting all the effort all of a sudden, I'm gonna feel like a dumbass. I'm gonna feel like my feelings are gonna be hurt. Like you don't value me. You don't care about me when that's not the case. So that's where I'm saying, you gotta be cautious with this. You gotta be logical. I know your little heart gets involved and you be feeling all kind of things. I do too. I got a big old heart and it just wants to love everybody. I just don't have time. But I'm self-aware enough to know and to check myself in these situations when I have been putting out effort to hang out with these people and see these people. It's not personal that they don't reciprocate that energy. They don't have that energy to give. So I think I've beat this whole topic down of assessing and getting objective about who you're dealing with. I just wanted to give that little example because I'm dealing with the exact same thing. But it does help me check myself and not get my feelings hurt. Like if you're aware someone is unavailable, at the level you want them and you try to pursue them anyway, that's your own damn fault when you get hurt. Sorry. Okay, so now let's jump into situations where you should be understanding and not think they're just playing with you and being petty. So if you're gonna pursue this person, first thing to look out for is when they don't text you back fast or there's a delay in communication, how do they handle this? This is how you can tell if someone is like fucking with you and wasting your time, or if it's an opportunity where you actually need to be understanding. So if someone is responding late or there's a delay, if they haven't responded in a minute, and then they come back to you with an explanation of where they just were or what they were doing all day and why they couldn't text you, green flag, be understanding. Because they're showing they're able to take you into consideration. They know that not talking to you all of a sudden was a little bit off and it probably caused you to be a little like worried or like what the fuck. So for them to come back with an explanation is to like ease your stress, ease your anxiety and kind of like give you the reassurance of like, I was doing all this, but I'm happy to talk to you now. Like this is what was going on. Let's chat. Like now let's hang out. Now let's make a plan. So if they come back with an explanation, perfect. If you're talking to someone and they stop responding, 
And then a day later or like hours and hours later, they just hit you with like, hey, no, baby, we ain't being understanding. We matching the energy. Ignored. I'm ignoring their ass. If you're not coming back with an explanation after you just like delayed the communication. No, that don't work for me. Sorry. And the explanation thing also goes for if someone says they can't hang out or why they can't see you, talk to you, whatever it is. Like if you invite someone to go do something and they don't just say no, they give you an explanation of like what other obligations they have or what else they're choosing to do. That's sweet. That's considerate. It's not just like, no, because then your brain is just left to wonder. Like, this is a considerate person we're talking about. If they're giving you explanations, I like it. But I'm not talking about that whole anxious panic explanation thing. I'm just saying like, hey, just letting you know, like that type thing. Like not the people that need to over explain themselves. That's you. <laughs> that used to be me too. But you guys get what I'm saying with the explanation thing. So the next time you should be understanding and not play no petty little game is if someone cancels plans and reschedules. So if someone just cancels plans, I don't like that. No. But if they cancel plans and say, I can't tonight, but I can in two days or I can next week. Like I have my mom visiting right now, like she's in town. So for me to say, hey, I can't do anything this weekend, but next Tuesday I'm free. I'll give you my next opening of like, I would like to see you. So I'm not just canceling the plan and being like, no, fuck you. I'm gonna give you an explanation of why I'm not gonna make it. And then I'm gonna give you a time when we can actually have the plan go through. That is when to be understanding. When someone is considerate of you, you be considerate to them. If someone's gonna be inconsiderate, be inconsiderate right back, fuck you. But that's a lot of reassurance right there. So if you're trying to hang out with somebody as a friend or date or something, that's your reassurance. If they cancel the plans and just cancel them, it's not gonna make you feel too good. But if they reschedule and they make it seem like they're still interested, don't be so upset about they can't make the plan. Okay, it's a letdown, sure. But there's reassurance in that. When they say, let's do it next week, let's hang out tomorrow night instead, there's still reassurance in that. Because if they weren't into you, they'd have just canceled and said, see you when I see you. <laughs> Me. <laughs> the next time to be understanding is, this is just something you need to understand about people, is not everyone is going to be strong enough to handle what you can. So a lot of people have different thresholds for how much they can take into consideration. Certain people can only juggle a few things and they're stressed out and they can't take a lot more into consideration. Other people can juggle a ton and still think of you. So there is a weird little like devil's advocate you need to play in like a balance beam type of game when someone is seeming like they're not putting that much energy into you. It might not be that they're inconsiderate. They might just be considering a lot and they just don't have the skills to be able to balance so many things. So that's where you kind of have to give people a little grace, but set boundaries with it. I'm very big on cutting everybody off. My favorite activity, Leo, what's your hobby? Cutting people off. <laughs> if you're starting to see and realize that someone is not really able to take you and everything else they're doing into consideration, if you're not cool with it, move on, move forward. Be understanding to your limit of what you will and won't expect and require out of people who want access to you friendship or relationship you got those requirements you got those standards remember my podcast episode standards keep you safe if you forgot about it go watch it go listen to it it's on youtube and apple Podcasts and spotify go listen to it but be understanding to your threshold of what you will and won't tolerate and that also ties back into like don't make it mean that they don't like you enough or you're not good enough for them. Like some people just aren't good at juggling a lot. They don't have that ability. So that one is kind of up to you and your opinion and your read of the situation. And I have a tip for getting less emotionally involved and being more objective. Like this is when you gotta be like strategic about the crazy, when you let it out and when you harness it, okay? Speak what is happening out loud. <laughs> I just got a visual of me talking to myself. I do this all the time because it helps me check back into like an objective perspective and get a more logical approach to every situation. Speak out loud what is happening. I texted this person. They didn't text me back. Okay? 
Stop filling in the gaps. Just speak out what actions have happened and what events have taken place. Or I texted this person. They didn't text me back, but they're posting on their story. Then you can make a smart decision of there's a potential they could be ignoring you on purpose. They're clearly active on their phone. They're clearly posting little shit. I'm talking about not influencers. I'm talking about normal people. Okay, we talked about this already. But if someone's normal, like a normal person, and they're not responding to your text, but they're posting and they're active on other places and other things, that is when you can say, nah, -uh, I'm not being understanding. I'm not tolerating this. You're fucking ignoring me. And now you lose access. That's how I am. <laughs> you got one chance to hurt my feelings and I'm out. But I swear to God, just speaking out loud what's happening gives you like this superpower over what's happening. It lets you kind of like remove all the assumptions you're making and the ways that you're looking at it wrong. Speak the actions out loud. I made plans with this person. I just text them to confirm they were gonna be there. They have not responded. Okay, we still got two more hours till the event. We're good. We're fine. Now, if it's like 10 minutes before the event and you still haven't heard from them, that's a different story. But it'll kind of relieve some of your anxiety when you stop filling in all the gaps. So just speak out loud what events have happened. And that'll give you a better idea of when to lash out and be petty, cut them off, or be understanding. That's kind of my way I approach it. All right, the next time you're allowed to be understanding, I'll let you. I'll let you be understanding. You don't have to cut them off yet. <laughs> is when people show you what they prioritize. Because you're free to do the exact same. When someone shows you what they're going to prioritize and what they're going to make matter and be important in their life. Sometimes be very understanding. If it's like a family thing or a death or something serious or their business, their job. You have to be understanding with these things. You can be whatever you want. If you don't want to be understanding, fine. Do what the fuck you want. But there are certain times where I am extremely understanding. Literally, blow me off for your family. I don't care. But if you're inconsiderate about it and you string me along and get me showing up on a plan and going through with things, if you don't give me enough notice, you're inconsiderate and you're out. But if you do blow me off for your family or something bigger going on that takes more importance over like our little hangout, I fully get it. Like I understand. But that is to be understood and reciprocated. If they cancel on you for something with their family and then you cancel on them for something with your family and they aren't understanding, scissors, scissors. I love a double standard, but not like that. Like with what's prioritized in your life, if I respect it on you, you better respect it on me. I'm glad I just said that word because it is more about respect than understanding. And it kind of is understanding too. It's both of respect and understanding. But let people show you what they prioritize. Let them do what they want to do. Stop trying to control people's behavior. You have to let the dog off the leash to see how it's gonna behave. If you're friends with someone or you're dating someone and you always got them on that leash, you're trying to control their behavior, you're never gonna know the truth of it. You don't want a dog that you force to be with you. You want a dog that you drop that leash and it stays its ass sitting right next to you. That's a dog you want. That's a friend, that's a partner you want. You don't want someone you constantly have to control and restrict and force them to be the way you want. Let people prioritize what they want. If you matter to them, they'll prioritize you. But let them show you. Don't force them to prioritize you. Don't fucking ask for love from anyone ever. Don't ask for your feelings to matter. Don't ask to be prioritized. Allow them to show you. And when people show you what they prioritize, that is where you get to look at it and say, okay, do I want to be understanding? Or do I want to reciprocate the energy? And this is where it gets like tricky with being petty. So when someone shows you what they prioritize, you are free to do the exact same thing. You, sh you should be doing that from the beginning. But if you understand the person you're dealing with is going to prioritize their job, let's say, over you and spending time with you at certain times. If you're okay with that and you understand that and you're going into it anyways, be understanding of it. Don't be petty on purpose. Don't not text them back. Don't give them a consequence for prioritizing what they want to prioritize. If you knew what you were getting into and you chose to get into it anyway, when this happens, you're not allowed to be a petty little bitch. You're allowed to express your feelings, sure, but don't be not texting them back. Don't be being fake busy the next day to like feed them back what they did you. That's trying to change their behavior. Don't do that.
Now, if you're actually busy, that's okay. Be busy, do your things, like prioritize what you guys wanna prioritize, but don't be petty on purpose if you know what you're getting into. That doesn't do anything. That's just gonna make you look nuts, and I'm trying to help you, like, disguise that. <laughs> now, before I tell you how to be petty and actually match someone's energy in a way that's gonna hurt them a little bit, I'm gonna give you one more tip. If you're gonna give it a shot with someone, whether it's a friendship or a relationship, my tip is give it a genuine shot. Feed effort and energy into this person. Don't restrict yourself. Don't hold back. Don't be petty on purpose. I want you to give this a genuine chance. If you're thinking of them, hey, thinking of you. If you wanna hang out, hey, what are you doing? You busy? Don't be scared of rejection. Don't be scared of looking needy. It is good to put your energy into it and give it a genuine shot. Be straight up about the way that you feel. If you wanna hang out, say it. Even if they haven't texted you back, fuck it. If you wanna hang out, say it. If they're like blatantly ignoring you, don't do that. But don't go in it too ego-driven. Like give it a genuine shot and speak like from the heart and how you truly feel. Don't be saying I love you. Don't be saying I love you before three months, minimum. We've talked about this in old episodes. But I want you to give it a genuine chance. If you're gonna go into it, do it. Because that's gonna set you up. When energy is not being matched, you get to walk away from this situation knowing you gave it a genuine chance. You will never leave with regret. You will never leave feeling bad. You will never leave like thinking, oh, I coulda, woulda, shoulda done all this shit. I shouldn't have been petty. I shoulda gave it a real shot. You'll never have that because you gave it a real shot. Give this a genuine chance so you can walk away with your balls in your hand like, yeah, and I'm happy I'm leaving because you know you gave it a genuine chance and they either fucked on you, didn't take you serious, or they just played with you and like wasted your time. You gotta give it a genuine chance so you can make this observation and feel solid in your decision to move forward if that's gonna be the case. And also, that sets you up. This can go both ways. If you go give this a genuine chance to be friends or date somebody, that's what it's gonna take to, for that to flourish. If it's gonna flourish, it's gonna flourish. If it's gonna flutter out, you're confident when you walk out. So now this is my mindset around matching their energy. When you give something a genuine shot and you're there and you're putting the effort into it, you're putting the energy into it, what you're doing is basically making someone become comfortable with your effort, energy, attention, and love. When you're putting it into them, they're getting used to it. They're getting comfortable. You're giving them a little safety blanket of you and your presence and talking to them and someone to be there for them and check on them and spend time with them and someone that's pursuing them. So, when someone mistreats this safety blanket that you give them, you snatch it from them immediately. This is low-key like a manipulation tactic, <laughs> but it's really not. Like, you're giving it a genuine shot, and I'm going to teach you how to handle it when people don't appreciate it. So, you've laid this foundation of you're consistent, you're stable, you're putting energy into them, you're trying to hang out. They're used to it, they're comfortable. A lot of people mistreat things once they're comfortable with them and they think that your presence is like cemented and it's like solid. They'll start to slack a little bit. If you notice their energy isn't matching yours or they're pulling back a little bit, snatch that fucking safety blanket. Remove your consistent presence from their life. Stop texting them all the time. Text them here and there. Seem a little bit more busy. Do your own shit. You got to give them a chance to miss you. And this is what is going to truly show you if someone is playing with you or not. You got to remove yourself a little bit. Not all the way, but be a little more inconsistent because they're used to the consistency. They're used to your presence. They're used to your texts and calls and your interest and your effort. They're used to feeling all this. They know what it feels like to have you coming forward at them. Now, you're going to start to pull back on it a little bit. Like I said, give them a chance to miss you. Hit them with the I'm busy like they keep hitting you with. If you tried to make a plan with them and they said they were busy or whatever it was, do not try and make another plan after that. And I'm saying this is after you've given things a genuine shot. Like this is not, that's not when you be petty. This is after you've done that and you've laid the safety blanket down. Don't reach out to make another plan. Let them miss you. Let them decide if they're going to reach out and make a plan with you. Let them miss your presence. And then that's going to make them be like, oh, wait, I haven't heard from so-and-so. I'm going to go message them. I want to hang out. Like you got to give them a chance to miss you because they just experienced what it was like to get your energy coming at them. And if they want to keep it, 
you got to act accordingly. So that might be the kick in the ass they need is to have that safety blanket ripped out for a second and get their priorities in check. Okay, I just experienced what it's like to have this person. I don't want to lose them. So they're going to come more forward at you with more energy. So when you stop making so much time and you stop being so consistent in their life and giving them something to depend on, which is your presence, this is when you find out if they actually like you. If they start coming forward at you and they try to make plans and they try to text you more after you've kind of like removed a little bit of yourself, that's a sign they like you and they want to pursue things with you. If you pull back a little bit and remove that safety blanket and it doesn't make them start to come forward at you, it means they don't miss you and they don't like you. Leave, literally move the fuck on and move forward. It sucks to hear it, but relationships and feelings and friendships get very weird and everybody kind of acts like a fucking four-year-old in the head. I do it sometimes too. Like we get jaded and clouded and I have to listen to my old podcast sometimes and like get myself in check when I'm being a dumbass. So if you need to come back to this episode, come back. I'll tell you, if they don't come forward, it means they don't miss you. And if they don't miss you, they don't like you. Well, maybe I shouldn't say they don't like you. They might just not be interested. So they might not be in a point in their life where they're interested in being friends or interested in dating and the thing that you want. So let me not say they don't like you. They might just not be ready or interested in the thing that you are. So just remember me saying that. If you ever want to match someone's energy, match it. But you better have given it a genuine chance first. You better have been your real authentic self first. Okay? Okay. And then you can snatch that little safety blanket. I love this. <laughs> so I was about to finish this podcast episode off with leaving a couple like points in about how to kind of like get into someone's life that is busy and make them like you and want you. But should I make a full podcast episode about like how to get famous people to like you? <sighs> like influencers and famous people? Leave me a comment down below and tell me. If you're on YouTube, leave a comment and tell me if I should make that episode. It's like, is that interesting to y'all? I feel like I'm a nosy fuck. I'd want to know. Because <laughs> that's where I'm going to leave this episode off. Because I feel like I can make a whole episode about the other one. About how to make famous people like you. So if you want that episode and you're watching on YouTube, leave a comment. And if you're listening on the audio version, give me a five stars rating. And then you can write in the description if you would like the episode or not. Nothing less than five stars. Please. <laughs> I really hope this brings some clarity to some people. Because this is a weird situation to navigate. But don't feel bad about matching energy. Match that shit if it's worth it. Now, if you just want to cut somebody off, that's that's the real one. That's the good one. That's my favorite. But that's all I got for this episode. All of my social media and everywhere you can keep up with me will be linked down below. I'll also link in the description my merch, my app. Everything you need from me is down in the description. Go look in it. Go play in it. Go see what I'm up to and what I'm doing. <laughs> But I do want to do a little trick right now because we're at the end of the episode. I want to see how many people actually listen to the episode all the way through. So if you are hearing this right now, comment a yellow heart. The yellow heart emoji. That's a cute one, I feel. Or like a blue butterfly. Do like a blue butterfly if you listen to this part right here. I want to see how many people actually fuck with me and listen to the end. So leave me a little blue butterfly. Everybody in the comments is going to be so confused. Like, why is there butterflies all around? <laughs> but that'll just be between us. That's our little code word. So leave me a little blue butterfly if you're hearing this right now. But on that note, everybody be safe, take care of yourself, and I will talk to you guys next Sunday.